5.2 GHz, all core with 1.34 volts. Hello Scatterbenchers and welcome to a brand new video. In today's video we overclock the Intel Core i5-10600K Comet Lake processor to 5.2 GHz all core with an AVX offset of 2 and CPU adaptive voltage of 1.45 volts. The i5-10600K is the baby of the overclockable 10th generation core CPUs. With 6 cores and 12 threads, it's noticeably less equipped than the 8 core i7 and the 10 core i9. On the flip side, the base frequency of 4.1 GHz is the highest among the 10th generation K CPUs. Then again, with a single thread turbo of 4.8 GHz and an all core turbo of 4.5 GHz, it's trailing the i7 and i9 by respectively 200 and 300 MHz. The PL2 for the i5-10600K is 182 watts and the MSRP comes in around $262. The 10600K was launched together with the other Comet Lake parts and should be on the shelves today already. In this video, we'll cover the basic overclocking steps needed to get your CPU all the way to 5.2 GHz using custom loop water cooling. We'll dig into three overclocking strategies. First, we'll simply press F3 when loading the BIOS to unlock Intel power limits. Two, we'll use the ASUS AI overclocking feature. Three, we'll also dig into some manual overclocking. Along with the Intel Core i5-10600K processor, in this guide we will be using the ASUS ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-4266 memory sticks, and of course EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be around $3,000. That's $260 for the CPU, $200 and an additional $400 for the cooling, $400 for the motherboard, $200 for the bench table, $200 for the memory, and $1,300 for the graphics card. In this guide, we'll use the following benchmarks. SuperPi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWBOT X264, Cinebench R20, ROG RealBench version 2.56 and Final Fantasy 14. Let's first take a look at the scoring at stock settings. Super Pi 4M 41.596 seconds. Geekbench 5 single threaded 1274 points. Geekbench 5 multi threaded 6405 points. HWBOT X264 4K 11.588 frames per second. Cinebench R20 3,563 marks. ROG RealBench, 119,488. Final Fantasy XIV, 96.25 frames per second. Running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX at 4.5 GHz and 1.066 volt, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 62 degrees and peak VRM temperature of 56 degrees, with an average CPU package power of 115 watts. The first step is definitely the most easiest. Clear the BIOS and press F3 to unlock power limits for increased performance. We reran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. Pretty much all the results are the same except for ROG RealBench where we see an increase of 8.82%. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 4.5 GHz and 1.083 volts. We're seeing peak CPU temperature of 62 degrees and peak VRM temperature of 57 degrees, with an average CPU package power of 117 watts. Now let's move on to the ASUS AI overclocking. ASUS AI overclocking is a genuinely novel approach to automatic overclocking. Rather than using a brute force approach with preset frequency and voltage, AIOC uses an algorithm to predict the optimal performance settings. The algorithm monitors system workload, the temperatures, fan speed and power draw to assess the quality of your CPU and cooling solution. Based on these inputs, it then adjusts the frequency real time to ensure a stable overclock. Before you enable AIOC, you must enter the operating system and run your preferred high load workload for 10 to 30 minutes, then reboot. In the BIOS, Navigate to the AIOC guide submenu or press F11. Read through the quick guide to get more familiar with the automatic overclocking procedures. Once you're ready, press enable AI. 
save the settings and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. We see a healthy performance boost ranging from 6.5 to 12.2%. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 5 GHz and 1.252 volts, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 82 degrees centigrade and peak VRM temperature of 65 degrees centigrade with an average CPU package power of 191 watts. Last but not least, let's get into manual overclocking. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set AVX Instruction Core Ratio Negative Offset to 2. Set CPU Core Ratio to Sync All Cores. Set All Core Ratio Limit to 52. Disable Ring Down Bin. Set Minimum and Maximum CPU Cache Ratio to 45. Set CPU Core Cache Voltage to Adaptive Mode. Set additional turbo mode CPU core voltage to 1.45 volt. Set CPU VCCIO voltage to 1.24 volts. Set CPU system agent voltage to 1.24 volts. Then save the settings and reboot. Again, we reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. We're seeing quite a nice performance increase ranging from 6.75% all the way up to 21.17%. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 5 GHz and 1.243 volts, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 80 degrees centigrade and peak VRM temperature of 65 degrees centigrade with an average CPU package power of 184 watt. Alright, time to wrap this video up. First, let's address the elephant in the room. I'm sure there's already people in the comments bashing in their keyboards asking why would any sane person use custom loop water cooling with a mid-range Core i5 CPU. After all, even a highly overclocked 10600K doesn't even break 200 watt CPU package power. There's be quite air towers that will handle up to 250 watts. And to those people I say, you are right. From a functional perspective, meaning cooling down the CPU, there's really no need for custom loop water cooling. On the other hand, there are people that like the aesthetics of custom loop water cooling. And for those people, there are cheaper options available. For example, the EK Classic Kits start at about $260. And if you go even more low end, you can find a Big Ski or a Barrel Kit and probably put together a custom loop for about $150. On the overclocking side, I was kind of disappointed with the 10600K. After all, you have four fewer cores than on the 10900K, but the overclocking headroom is kind of lower. It seems like Intel did a very good job sorting the good silicon from the average silicon and just put all the good stuff with the Core i9s. It's not really something that pisses me off that much because it's pro probably just good business sense to do it this way. In the end, overclocking your 10600K will give you 15 to 20% performance boost and your temperatures will not go out of whack. So what's not to like? Anyway, this was the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you like the video, you know what to do. Until the next time.